Hey there, Mission Control. In my last video, I promised you that we start talking about bottoms up watering and what we're gonna do there. So let's jump in. So bottoms up watering, what is it and why do we care? Standing here with our refactored grow lanes, these are ones that this, uh, last year, 2017, we brought in these uh, smaller shelves. This is a germination rack right here where you actually put the microgreens and let them germinate in their trays. And then you'd move them up to the grow rack uh, was the plan. And then from here, we were watering from the top down. Now, when we uh, did our watering, we were using well water, so it's nice and clean. And, and you absolutely have to do that if you're doing top-down watering. You need nice, clean water. That's a food safety issue. Um, it needs to be tested. Make sure there's no little bad guys swimming around in there. And uh, ours, safe to drink, had it tested. Life is good there. And you spray it from the top down. Now, spraying from the top down, it was really nice because it helped actually uh, take the cocoa core that we grow with and actually spray it down off of the, the grow area, you know, the, the stems and everything that were growing up the plant and uh, give a nice kind of clean representation, a nice clean product. But as we talked about in lots of previous videos, that, that creates a really not good environment. It's El Bado. It's an El Bado environment uh, for the microgreens to actually grow in because it's very damp and you're getting lots of water onto the plant itself and then it doesn't really dry. And depending on when you water, uh, you could actually end up having mold and fungus problem like what we did. So uh, what we need to do is shift from spraying from the top down to letting water come from the bottom up. And uh, so we gotta have our pump system uh, and our valves, we're gonna have those all connected. So let's go to the other side of this lane. Let's see what type of modifications we're gonna have to do in order to make this work. All right, so here's our existing uh, fill valve. Now, these are all gonna get traded out with the new ball valve system that we showed in a previous video. These valves here just aren't, uh, when you're pumping fish waste through them, they're just not totally robust enough to do the job. So we gotta figure out, we gotta go connect into the main line here. Here's our grow bed that we're gonna have for microgreens up top. Uh, and we're gonna bring the aquaponic water up to here. The pump we have will do that, no problem. Uh, but we've got to be able to deliver all that and deliver water for the aquaponic bed. So that's one of the requirements is we've got to connect the, aqu the uh, microgreen beds into aquaponics. At least, let me back up first. Actually, sorry, yeah, I forgot to tell you this. Very important. We're actually, before we do this, we're going to be doing an experiment uh, and going over bringing the aquaponic water into the microgreen trays using the bottoms up method and uh, make sure it's safe and all those types of things. We believe it will be, seeing other people doing it. Uh, aquaponic water is very good water, um, but there are some concerns there about food safety and all that, so we're gonna check that all out. We did talk to the regulators. It's another one of those gray areas, uh, but in general, as long as that water doesn't touch the edible part of the plant, you're good. Uh, the good news for us is we don't sell the seeds and the lower part of the stalks on those plants. Uh, they actually, we cut them all, um, so you're not going to have someone grabbing that and eating the seeds like you would on a sprout, which is what everybody's kind of concerned about. So anyway, let's get back to this. So we're hoping uh, that we can use aquaponic water. We also believe aquaponic water has more good bacteria in it, which will be beneficial to the plants and uh, kind of helping keep the bad bacteria away. So a lot more research to do there, but that's the game plan right now. So I'm assuming we're going to do that, which means I need a tee here and come up and then be able to fill uh, the microgreen trays, the bottoms up trays from here. It's going to be kind of interesting how I choose to uh, connect the microgreen valves into the system. Now we're only going to put microgreen trays on four of the beds based on our uh, revenue needs and the size of our beds, 12 foot long by four feet wide. Um, we only need four, so this is lane two, which is going to have microgreens up here, microgreens on its second bed, and lane three will also have microgreens on it on, lane, on beds one and two. So it gives us four 12 foot beds of microgreens and each one of the four, but, four foot by eight foot trays that we're looking at that would go up here, uh, I'm sorry, four foot by 12 foot trays can hold 24 of the 10 by 20 trays. So uh, gonna have 24, 23. I think there's a rounding error there, but someone's gonna check me. I know that. I think it's 23. It's like 23.1 or something like that. I forget. Um, anyway, over 20, less than 30. So 
I need to be able to connect into the automation system, which is going to be very easy. We have plenty of relays on our um, relay board over here that we put in recently. So we can control any of the valves that we want to put there. We can actually use the smaller valves if we want for the microgreen trays because we're not going to be pumping a lot of water up there. Uh, but we do want them connected to automation so that it waters early in the morning and precisely the right amount that we want. So we can use math, do a measured amount, and then have the system open the valve for just that amount of time with the flow rate that we have and put the water into the grow bed, which is going to go up top. So let's talk about that. So here we are on lane three now. So like I said, this bed is going to have a tray on it and this bed is going to have a tray on it. Now these trays are four feet by 12 feet long, so they'll fit and fill this entire thing. We looked at a few different ways of doing this. Um, what we mean by a tray is a little tray about yay deep um, that'll sit here that the grow trays will sit in. And then you put water into the bottom tray, that really big one, and then the trays, the grow trays have holes in them. They're 10 by 20 trays, a very popular tray. They're one inch deep and then they have holes in the bottom so that the water in the grow tray, the, the one that holds the water, uh, gets sucked up uh, into the 1020 tray through the wicking motion. And that lets you have, um, that allows all those little trays to soak up water and not have to spray from the top down. We looked at individual 10 by 20 trays and just decided against that kind of a hassle. It's not a commercial viable type of thing. People don't do that really for commercial systems. And uh, Mrs. Martian was able to find this tray that went all the way up here. In our next video, we're actually going to start building this tray and putting it up here. Uh, but I think it's, it's going to work out pretty nice having the full tray up here, set the microgreens in here. I think probably one of the biggest challenges we'll have is just leveling everything, keeping it all nice and level so the water flows correctly in here. Um, that's, we'll have to just use shims and all that uh, to make sure everything is, is flat up there. But shouldn't be too bad. So we'll use the valve system that we have. Somehow we'll connect that all together. Uh, but we also have to drain these. So um, as we, actually, you know, now that I think about it, I might put them on a different pump. Maybe even individual pumps. I don't know. I'm going to think about that one. I, so I might put the microgreens onto their own pumps. That just takes more electricity. I'll think about it. Anyway, uh, regardless of pumps, we're going to need to drain the beds uh, from time to time. So I'm thinking just a, a plug drain system, put a drill hole in it, plug it. Uh, and then if something, something's bad or whatever, you need to drain it. Uh, you just pull the plug on it um, and let it drain down the aquaponics bed below because it's aquaponic water um, and life is good. So I think that's, a, that's it. So we gotta got to build the bed. We got to deal with the pumping the water up to the bed. Uh, we'll either use existing pump architecture or we'll put in a microgreen pump just for microgreens, uh, which could be a smaller pump because you don't need a lot of water. You don't need a high flow rate. You just need the head. You need about eight feet of head. So that's not a bad option. It's all got to be controlled with automation so that it can be watered when we're not here. Uh, and also it can be watered early in the morning so that that allows for evaporation and everything to occur uh, and the plants will not be sitting in very wet water uh, all day long or late at night when the temperature drops. So that's it for this video, just introducing kind of the I'll call them requirements. They're not really well written or well stated requirements, just the things that we need to do. Uh, but that's kind of the game plan here for the bottoms up watering. In the next video, I intend to get you into actually building the darn thing, uh, see how that all goes. It's going to probably take a day or two uh, for us to get it all put together because it comes in parts because it's so big. So we'll see how that goes. But I look forward to sharing that with you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian. Out.